Well, Wolfpack Nation, thank you all so much for tuning in today. I, I, I could personally say this is an interview I've been very excited about. I know for Mick and I, when we first started this, we were looking forward to this day, and we we're so excited this year as we are here today with Coach uh, or Athletic Director Debbie Yao. Uh, thank you so much, Debbie, for joining us today. Thank you. I'm now uh, Athletic Director Emeritus. Or, right. uh, but because I'm female, it's actually Emerita. Ah. Emerita. Oh, yeah. Really? Huh. No, hmm. no, there isn't. It's uh, it's with a T A instead of a T U S. Yeah, so and it's not in okay. the uh-huh. country, North Carolina. It's not Emerita, is it? It's just Emerita. <laughs> <laughs> Emerita could be either one. Yeah. Could be either okay. one. Making good point. That's true. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> So, but before we get started, though, please make sure, again, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free to do and really help support us in the channel. Uh, please give us, give this video a like, check out all of our great in-state content, and uh, give us a follow at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter or Instagram. But again, jumping right into it, Abby. So the first thing we always love to do uh, with, with people we interview um, is really just kind of allow our viewers to kind of get an opportunity to kind of help understand kind of what, what, are, you, what are you up to right now? Um, you know, where are you at? And so I know that from from you and I talking mm-hmm. that that you're very involved with the board of directors at Elon University, which is awesome, mm-hmm. um, and then still do a whole lot of college sports overall in general. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm sure it seems yeah. like you're still very busy from day to day. Yeah, well, there's busy, what a normal person might consider be busy, and then there's busy being a full time athletic director. So I'm busy, like I would consider a regular human being to be. Okay. Um, and that is, I'm doing my board work, uh, board of trustees at Elon, uh, just got back from Las Vegas for, uh, meeting, uh, of the national board of, for the uh, national football foundation. And we had our induction hall of fame induction for both, uh, coaches and for, uh, we honor student athletes as well, who are great mm-hmm. football players who also have great GPAs and community service. Mm-hmm. And then um, a year ago, I started working with a group called the National uh, Coalition of Minority Football Coaches. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Nick Saban's on that board as well. Mm-hmm. And our mm-hmm. job, our goal is to do the best we can to help minority coaches uh, get ready for the next step, whether it's a position coach to a coordinator's position or a coordinator to a head coach. Mm-hmm. And so those, those those three things, if you do them well, mm-hmm. then they, they keep me fairly busy. And then I get a lot of calls. I do get a lot of calls because I was in the uh, enterprise. I call it the enterprise. I don't call it the industry. I don't call it the business. Mm-hmm. It's the enterprise because okay. it's everything. It's not a, it's a quasi business. Be a business in the afternoon, uh, and in the morning you might be talking about graduation rates to the athletic council, the the faculty members there. Uh, but people uh, that I've known for a long time will call and talk to me about potential uh, job opportunities, as an example they might have, or they're trying to decide between two different options, and they just need a, a sounding board and someone who understands mm. the enterprise. Uh, so I do as much of that as I do anything else. That's Makes really, sense. That's really neat. I'm, you know, I was at least from a fan's perspective and hearing you um, speak while you're the athletic director at NC State and before how you focus so hard, and even at Maryland too, about having an all around athletic program. And you mentioned mm-hmm. the GPA even now, obviously the performance of sports yeah. is big. Is there a backstory to why you took that philosophy or why that is so Absolutely. critical to you? Well, there are two reasons primarily. There might be more than two if I thought harder about it, but the two that come to mind right away, one is I was an Olympic sport coach. So as a women's basketball coach at Kentucky and Mm -hmm. Oral Roberts University and the University of Florida, I know what it feels like to be an Olympic sport coach and how terrific it is when someone pays attention to what you're doing and acts like they really, really care about whether or not you're successful. That's one reason. The reason as an AD per se is this, when you're trying to develop a culture and there, you know, books, how many books have been written on how do you develop culture and what is culture? And culture is so simple in this regard. It's everything you say and do. That's your culture. There it is. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying, we were number 89 in the director's cup in 2010. We wanted to do better. um, And I said it, the press conference, we would be a top, become a top 25 program. People kind of snickered and I I don't, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the long story short is you celebrate every success. So it doesn't matter who gets there first, who wins the next ACC championship or who advances further than we've ever advanced in the NCAA tournament. You celebrate it all because as you celebrate it around the table at the coaches meetings, things begin to shift. Mm -hmm. People begin to, you, I, I loved watching it happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, we already had pockets of success mm -hmm. and back in the day we had had a lot of success. So it isn't like we had never been there. Mm -hmm. So I felt like we could be there again. So it's like when Lori, Lori, um, Hennis wins the right. championship, the national championship in cross mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. We'd been headed toward that for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's the right, right person, the right coach at the right time. So when you're, if you're sitting there as another coach and you're seeing someone else um, being celebrated for what they've done, of course you're sitting there. If you have any competitive spirit at all, you're thinking, "Hmm, I'd like to be in that position. I wonder what we can get done." Mm -hmm. And so over time, it takes a while, but yeah. over time it begins to take hold. <clears throat> and then as you hire other people, you you try to hire people who have that competitive spirit. And then before long, you look around the table and you have. Braden Holloway right. and George Kiefer and Tim Santoro and right. Pat Papalizio and Braden Holloway. And, and now you've got energy so much in the room. I mean, you can feel it yeah. when you walk in. It sounds like yeah, it's so, 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 so that's why. You know, it sounds like that way you're kind of describing it in short, in a abbreviated terms. It's a, it's a contagious factor. It sounds like it's, mm -hmm. it breeds mm -hmm. more and more mm -hmm. fuel mm -hmm. like, and belief to a degree. Mm -hmm. It does. That's awesome. Absolutely. It it does it does do that. You don't have to force it. it has nothing yeah. to do with that. It's all organic, and that's why it works so well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so one thing too, uh, Debbie, that I think uh, for myself, uh, from talking to former players um, that I know personally uh, that 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 were there when when you were there, was that all of them said multiple times how they define you as kind of a, a player's AD. That you know that that you had a great relationship with the players that you wanted to know how they were feeling, how they were doing, you know everything about it. And I feel like for me at least, you don't hear that a lot from athletic directors around the country necessarily about how obvious it is that that how great relationship you have with the players. So do you feel that that you're, that being an athletic director that having that close relationship with the players really makes your makes you helps you do better at your job? And then can you even kind of talk a little bit about some of the relationships yeah. that even you may still have with players? Well, I, I first of all, I kind of first of all, I think you'd be surprised from an, on a national level how many ADs covet the opportunity to spend time with their athletes. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you give a lot of that up when you become an AD. You really do because suddenly you're not responsible for two or three sports as a sport administrator. You're responsible for everything. Right. And your life is just eaten up with things that have nothing to do with your to-do list and what you thought you were going to do that day. You might not ever even get to anything on that list. Mm -hmm. I think of the people that I spent the most time with are the coaches and right. through the coaches, you, right. you, you try to make things better for the athletes. So, um, you know, again, it's not anything you force. So mm -hmm. I I don't think it's so much the amount of time as it is the quality of the time, if you mm -hmm. can really help them with their issues when they come to you. Mm -hmm. Normally, they're going to their coaches. Right. It's usually when they become yeah. seniors and the reality that they're going to graduate <laughs> it is mm -hmm. finally upon them mm -hmm. and they start thinking thinking who can help me with the next phase of my life. That's when I would see more of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, they, they reach out to me and, you know, I've tweeted a couple of notes with their permission. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's really, it's really special to me. Uh, Naheem, I think sent me something, you know, a gift and, yeah. um, right. and he's with the Colts and it, it they're just, it, but it doesn't, it, it matters to me whether they're, you know, great football student athletes or um, whatever team right. uh, they're on. But I right. always think about it like the linkage for me is the AD is working, you know, coaching the coaches in a sense, not in the X's and O's. It's just helping them through those tough spots when they're not sure what to do next, mm -hmm. whether it's an issue with a student athlete that's really serious um, or any any number of other choices. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they all have day to day sports supervisors. I'm not an AD who I don't, I, this probably were years, um, uh, have been years when I was still active and working that I, I wasn't even signing financial paperwork for teams. That's the job of the sports supervisors. Mm-hmm. I give them the parameters. You stay under budget. You do nothing illegal, <laughs> nothing mm-hmm. immoral, yep. and life is going to be good. You step yeah. over those boundaries, and you will feel my presence in a major way. <laughs> sure. I love it. And love so it. they create their own space by mm-hmm. how well things go. Well, you know, like people say, what's your management style? Well, it depends on who you are. <laughs> I mean, right. I've had people I would have to track down to say, hey, haven't seen you in a few days. I'd like to say hello. How are things going? You know, because they're yeah. so good at what they do. They're moving and moving along and, and I want them to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are other people. If it's not going well, you will feel, they would feel my presence a lot mm-hmm. because I want to know everything that's going on because I'm trying to evaluate whether or not this is going to work. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You, uh, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but when you are hiring coaches, especially younger coaches that can be sometimes unproven, mm-hmm. um, like Braden Holloway, you mentioned, Pat mm-hmm. Papalizio, yeah. even Dave Doran at the time he was hired. Is there yeah. a common trait you're looking for mm-hmm. between them all, mm-hmm. or does it just kind of differ sport to sport and coach to coach? Well, it, it's not an absolute, but a common thread that we, we do look for and that people, uh, the search committees, the people that we put together in senior management and athletics, I always say to them, look for someone who doesn't fit in the top 25. So mm-hmm. a good example would be okay. Braden. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, who, of course, Braden was associate head coach at Virginia Tech. Uh, Pat Papalizio was head coach at, oh gosh, the little school in the Northeast. Yeah. It's terrible of me not to be able to remember the name of the school he came from. Sorry. It's okay. I, don't, I, don't, I just, sorry, can't remember. Yeah, that's okay. We were looking at the top 25 for wrestling. And number five was the school Pat was at. And I said, where is that? What, mm-hmm. what school is that? Mm-hmm. And they Googled it and said, it's in New York. It's upstate New York, we think. And uh, who's the coach? A guy named Pat Papalizio. I said, how do you say that name <laughs> again, Papalizio? <laughs> and so we, uh, we, we knew immediately there's something happening good there because right. they shouldn't be that. So you bring them in, you see if the fit is appropriate. In Braden's case, he had never been a head coach. I didn't. I, I wanted to hire a head coach. We were really kind of pursuing the head coach at Michigan at that time. Um. But, you know, once we met Braden, all the ideas that we really needed to hire a head coach who was a sitting a sitting head coach, right. it just kind of went out the window because mm-hmm. Braden is Braden. And, and I said to Braden, look, <clears throat> I was told we will never be good in swimming <laughs> because the pool is only four and a half feet deep in one end and the pool <laughs> doesn't swim fast. And he just looked at me. And he said, I said, what is your, what's your response to that? I mean, how, how, how does this work? I'm a basketball coach. I, I, what is that true? <laughs> Educate. He said, he, he said, Debbie, water is wet. I said, what? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. He, he said, water is wet. <laughs> we might not get our fastest times in our pool, but we'll go at that time. Maryland just built a new pool and, and um, he said, we'll go to Maryland and as an example, and that's the that, that pool swims the fastest right now in our league. This is obviously before they left for the Big Ten. And he mm-hmm. said, we'll get, our, we'll get our best times there. I said, so it's not a factor? He said, no, it's not a factor at all. Mm-hmm. So I thought, oh, I like this guy. He's a yeah. no excuses kind of guy. Um, and they were partying a little bit too much. And, you know, the thing that worried me, kept me up at night, uh, would be their safety. So, you know, there's a reason people say our brains are not fully formed until we're 25 and you can see it play out in a lot of different ways. And so you need, you need people, the student athletes need people around them. They benefit most when someone with good common sense and strong leadership skills is there as a head coach. And he had all, he had all of that. So those are two, two examples, you know, I love it. Um, 
And it looks like it's working out pretty well. Yeah. Well, I was well, going to look it up real quick. It was Binghamton is where Papa oh, Lizzie is from. Thank you. And you mentioned. You know, I yeah. should remember. And you mentioned. No, I'm Billy, Billy Baldwin. You know the Baldwin brothers? I think yes. I've heard of their names, uh, yes. And Yeah. So uh, Billy is was a wrestler at Binghamton. And um, he and we became friends. Um and we text and he's, he's in Europe right now. They're making a movie, but he, he loves Pat. And so that's how <laughs> Pat kind of cool. dragged him along with him to okay. NC state. Mm. And uh, Billy also does the court side at the national championships for wrestling. He carries mm. around a mic for ESPN and interviews people and does different things. Mm. He really mm. loves the sport. Wow. Yep. So that's he's cool. a, he's a fan now of NC state. Yeah. That's great. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Dress Up protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Dress Up. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Well, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, because you, you kind of mentioned, Donnie, I mean, looking at, you know, the wrestling program and how, I mean, they're consistently competing for a top five national championships. I mean, there's no doubt that Papa Pop, who has the program heading in the right direction, looking at swimming and diving, how great they're doing, softball even, you know, just signed the number four overall recruiting class. I mean, there's so many sports. I mean, Westmore, women's basketball, I mean, they've yes. been phenomenal. So, I mean, I mean, yep. do you ever, do you ever just, 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 you know, take a look at the, this program right now and, I mean, feel that warmness inside? of like you know like you know like because i know that was a goal of yours to so kind of look at as like you know oh yeah i'm i, I yeah, did it almost of a sort i'm proud i'm proud of them i mean kim yeah. landris is here in gymnastics we interviewed her i yeah. didn't think we could could hire her because she had finished number 11 in the country three of her six years as head coach at illinois absolutely and I'm, I'm telling the group like y'all come on come on she's she's been number 11 in the nation three times you know just it's, we brought her in anyway, and lo and behold, mm-hmm. she and her husband decided that they're going to move their family here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would make the case, although I don't know what happened this year, but George Kiefer in soccer mm-hmm. and Santoro mm-hmm. killing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. Generally, mm-hmm. Uh, it's taken us to another level uh, in that sport. And how about uh, – how about tennis? Kyle Women's Spencer tennis. Yeah. Simon Earnshaw. Yeah. Final four. yeah. I know. Underrated. Mm-hmm. Underrated. Mm-hmm. Goodness. <laughs> Goodness. So, you know, you kind of have to be ready, not just as an AD, but as a senior associate AD. You bring in people like this who are uh, goal oriented, if not driven, you mm-hmm. better you better buckle up because yeah. you're going to hear from them a lot. I need this. I need that. I, you yep. know, and it's a great trade off if you really want to try to build a program, mm-hmm. uh, because I would make the case that a number of in a number of these uh, sports, they're overachieving. Uh, given they don't have all the bells and whistles that, that some people have, and that makes it even more special. And Absolutely. I think uh, uh, Boo has hired uh, a couple of people, and it looks like they're going to – I know volleyball is looking better. Patrick yeah. Swift, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, no, no, no. Yeah, Lu- yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of How softball. do you say his name? Luca, Luca. Luca, 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 right. Luca Slabe. That's right. Luca Slabe. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's looking up. And I think we have a new uh, rifle coach, Kelly Carter, but I don't, I don't know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yes. it's a different person. So, yeah. um, but most of the others are, are still there and, and Dave mm-hmm. just had a really good year uh, and a nice bowl as a reward yeah. holiday, yes, holiday bowl. You yes, hate indeed. that it's so far away for the fans oh, really, well, yeah. and the families, but it's a nationally known bowl and a nationally known opponent. Yeah. So yeah. you make a, a big splash. Carried on by, TV. It's, by, I think it's the only bowl yes. game on yeah. Fox. Prime time. Yeah, prime time. Yes. Mm-hmm. So do you guys know who the all time winning is coach in the history of NC State is in any sport? In any sport. Is it your sister? So in- <laughs> 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 joking. But she's good. Yeah. But no. I've got two questions for you. That's one all of time them. I got another one too. I, yeah. All time winning is coach. Most wins. Um man. I don't know. That's so hard. I well, you know it's not football because there's only twelve games a year. So, <laughs> um, but is it um, Everett Case? Maybe. Yeah, I was gonna say Norm Sloan. That, 
I was thinking a basketball coach, but Norm, Norm Sloan, she's case. like you guys are just <laughs> rookies. <laughs> well, You're killing me. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, I'm gonna qualify it by saying uh, it's the person that has won the most ACC championships of, of any any coach. That's hmm, that should help a little bit, but. But you'll have yeah, all day to... here. You're trying to run a program here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You right. we, we, just, we just had just... a trivia segment a while ago, so this is put a good you out one. of your misery yeah. here. I've got another one for you too. Okay, um, I'm sure you could Raleigh go. Geiger. Raleigh Geiger. Raleigh Geiger. Raleigh Geiger okay. is the all-time wow. winningest coach in the history of. Uh, it's a good first name in the sport. sport. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, dom- we dominated for years. Cross country, we dominated. Yeah. Now we, 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 I'm not. Yes, we don't. We don't dominate necessarily. Right now, but but he had a period of time where he just dominated. Now here's my last, second and last question. Okay. Love it. Question. Okay, who was the first female All American in any sport at NC State? Is it is it mm-hmm. Hennis? Well, I'm gonna let you guess. Is that is that the only guess? We <laughs> no, well, that's no, my all, first all, guess because I just know she was she was a runner, very good one oh. at that early on. And she was an all American. It's true. Yeah, she was an all American. One of those earliest. As was her daughter recently. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, I forgot. I feel like I remember because yeah. we, we we talked about women's basketball. Women's basketball mm-hmm. had yeah that was player of yeah. the year. I think she was Placey Player of the Year back in like the this, this was I don't remember who it 4K. was K. It was a women's basketball player, and it mm-hmm. was in the 1975-76 season. Yep. So, yeah, right before. Who, um, who was it? Dang, Dad. Don't know the name. I have no uh, idea. I'm going to be honest with but, you. Hey, don't I'm, know just the name. Of myself, I'm, I'm just proud of myself that I, it sounds like I got the sport right. Which I mean, great, was, was, you was, did. was Debbie you, Antonelli you there Debbie, that year? Once, I don't know. No. no, no, no. That's too, that's too younger early. than that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's way too early for her. That's why I felt like that was yeah. too. That was too old. I don't know. Put us out of our misery, Debbie. You're, you're, okay. you're that's a good one for us. <laughs> the first female All American in any women's sport at NC State University yep. was Susan Yao, my younger oh, sister. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So How did she I and I played. She and I played for K at Elon, and then I graduated. Okay. And mm-hmm. Susan had uh, two years of eligibility left. So Susan played at Elon for mm-hmm. K in 74, 75. And then um, Willis Casey, the longtime AD yeah. at State, called K and personally recruited her to mm-hmm. come to NC State to do something with women's basketball. Okay. And so and back in the day, the women belonged to a whole nother association called the AIAW, mm-hmm. the Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women, I think something like that, mm. before the NCAA, right. which we got, we joined in 1980. So mm-hmm. right. you could transfer and play immediately. And Susan had one year left yeah. and she had yep. just made All-American mm-hmm. at Elon. Mm. It's the first year we ever had all American. So in wow. so she would have made it four years, but they didn't have it her freshman right. sophomore year. They started right. her to junior year. It was Kodak called Kodak All American back in the day versus yep. a McDonald's or something. Yep. And um so she transferred with Kay hmm. and uh made all American. Still state. holds uh still holds a single game um rebound record. Uh, she was actually a point guard, believe it or not, at five ten, and uh, I think it was twenty six rebounds in one game. It was something wow. you're just like unreal, educating unreal us so hard right now? <laughs> well, see, no, I just, well, I you know I have to know that one. Like when we redid right. yeah. when we redid Reynolds, Susan yeah. called me and said, "Hey, you know my jersey that's in the rafters?" I mm-hmm. said, "Yes, I know your jersey's in the rafters." <laughs> and she said, "What? Well, what about it?" She said, "Well, it just says Yao, and people think it's for K." When you redo it, can you can you put my initial on S, there? Yeah. I said, okay, Susan, I'll try. That's, and so I, 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 you might know a guy. I told Michael Lippitz, yeah, and we told Michael Lippitz that who was chair of the chair of the building committee. And what mm-hmm. they decided, the building committee decided on the on the jerseys, they weren't just going to put initials anyway. They put the entire name. Uh, so if nice. you walked in Reynolds today, Susan's jersey is there, and it says Susan Yao. Mm-hmm. Is in all so caps, S U S A N Yao. Well, yeah. well, I didn't tell her that we had done that, you know, until the first time she walked into Reynolds five years ago. Oh, wow. She was thinking there might be an S up there, so she was thrilled. Mm-hmm. When that's she saw cool. Oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And, and, you know, one last question for you too, Debbie. And, and, you know, I think this is one that I was definitely excited to bring up. But, I mean, you know, you kind of talk about basketball. And, obviously, I, I feel like that without talking to you that I can – you know, more likely guess that women's basketball, especially at state, has a, has a special place for sure. And so, you know, looking at Wes Moore, especially when when you brought him on, how knowing that he was a former KL assistant and obviously mm-hmm. did very well previously and obviously has been doing amazing now, um, you know, would you say that, you know, that, 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 that that really that there was that that kind of extra sense of like you know we're going to get women's basketball to that level that 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 you and your family would expect it to to be at and then i mean would i mean are you surprised at all at how successful west has been i mean consistently probably now and for the near future being a you know elite program in the women's basketball world well I, uh, I, I didn't plan on hiring Wes I, and he knows this. We, you should interview him sometime just about what that was, that interview process with life was like, <laughs> yeah. um, I had two women, different women in mind. Mm-hmm. Sure. I had hired a number of men to coach women's sports. We just mentioned a couple like Braden still had oh, yeah. women's swimming and Tim Santoro had women's soccer and I was feeling it like mm-hmm. I just Makes there are talented women. You've got to go find talented women. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I we reached out to both of them and each of them said, um, you know, this is several years ago. And then each of them said, well, in separate conversations, I'm, I could not consider it because it's you're, you're not in a good place uh, for mm-hmm. at least seven hundred thousand dollars. And so mm-hmm. I told the committee that made it easy for me in the sense that I didn't have $700,000. Right. So it, we're not even close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those two people were off the, off the table and Wes came for the interview. And it was a little bit like the Braden experience when he came to interview, uh, you know, he made a definite impression on me and was willing to grow with us. Mm-hmm. So he was willing to take the job for four not seven. Hmm. And I said to him, if you do the job and you do it well, I'm going to, we're going to, it's going to happen. <laughs> take, we're going to, yeah. we're going to take care of you. And so he, yeah. he, he finally did come on board. And then he said to me one day early on, he said, I know you love rentals and so do I, but to 17 year olds, this is just an old tired mm-hmm. building. And I said, we're working on it at that point in time. I didn't know that the campus needed and wanted to have a place to have convocation on campus and student concerts right, yeah. and different things. And so when they came to the table with $15 million, it was the first time they had ever, only time they ever partnered with athletics on a facility. Mm. So we, we did through the Wolfpack club did 20 million and they did 15 mm. wow. and suddenly it became a real possibility. Yeah. Otherwise we'd still have the same building. They, we could not have done that without wow. the campus. And Wes said it was transformational for him in recruiting when we created an, uh, oh, yeah. an updated upscale, a comp- competition venue that, you know, was lovely. And uh, it's, when it's full, it's really something, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. So it, it, it all kind of worked together. The timing worked together and I'm just grateful. He took the risk Mm -hmm. uh, in coming here and it probably took longer to turn it around than he wanted to, but we did need to get the facility straightened out. Yeah. Because like to, to lifelong NC state fans like you and a lot of us, the old Reynolds has a lot of memories and it's really cool. But you know, to 17 year old kids who don't have any connection to the school, it's, yeah. it's not that impressive. <laughs> sure. And we tried we tried to keep a number of the artifacts. We tried to keep things mm-hmm. in, in, the, yeah. in the walk of fame and history mm-hmm. that we created throughout the building so that people could still wander through the building and see some things that look familiar yeah. to them and, and reminisce Absolutely. and talk about uh, the, the good old days and the, and the games when Coach Valvano right. was there and when Coach Sloan was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, I mean, the first first time they – I told them what we wanted in the building, and then the first estimate we got was $51 million. And I remember thinking, well, uh, y'all, that's $16 million more than we had. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. That. And, and yeah. they said well, they use, you know, the, instead of they use the words, you know, value engineer. They said you need to value engineer the, the building. What do you want to take out? Mm-hmm. We had to take yeah. out a lot of stuff. But I would make mm-hmm. the case today that I, I can't even remember what we took out. I, at the time, I thought it was terrible to have to to cut yeah. different things. But but yeah. uh, now 
I, I can't even remember what it was. Uh, I love it so right. much. And I, yes. I just hope, you know, and I think we will uh, keep it up, keep, keep it looking nice, keep, it, oh, keep yes. it looking fresh, you know. Oh, yes. We'll, we'll keep the house that case built looking fresh. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so, case. so so thank you all so much again for tuning in. Really appreciate y'all support. Make sure to tune in with us for part two as we continue on here with this great conversation. Please make sure again to hit that subscribe button. Give us a like. Check out all of our great state content. And uh, follow us at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter and Instagram. But thank you all so much. As always, go pack, y'all.